All right, we're back on the Student Nation podcast. Um, we went we went so long on that first segment, Caleb. We're probably going to have to do a shorter segment to get caught up on the advertisement breaks. But whatever, man, that was fun. Oklahoma with a big 51-3 to win to start the 2024 college football season. First game as a member of the SEC Conference. Oklahoma plays Houston this Saturday night, 6.45 p.m. is the kickoff. We'll have an entire podcast episode dedicated to previewing that game. And we'll talk about it just a little bit here in a minute. But um, let's go with true or false, Caleb. I I need to say it's my fault that we did not do this on on the the last week's uh, midweek episode because I just skipped over it. I, I just totally skipped over it, and you were prepared, and it's all on me. So, sir, this is your time. Take it away. All right. My first one, kind of a doozy for you. But true or false, we won't see the true Oklahoma offense until we play Tennessee. When you when you say true, I mean the true Oklahoma offense. You're you're talking about just kind of opening up the play playbook and getting creative and that kind of stuff, right? Just kind of like really what they're going to do with the running backs, uh, the the full tree route on receivers, uh, the use of the tight ends, that whole package, right? That's what you're talking about. Basically, what we saw Friday night. Completely different from that. Actually yeah. using our playmakers, actually kind of spreading the field and letting kind of this offense be what we thought this offense can be. No, I think that's true. I I, I think what you're going to see with Houston on Saturday night and then Tulane the week after, I, I think you're going to see the offense work on certain things. You know, work, work on certain, you know, there was clearly a, a a reason that they wanted to keep the game short on, on, on Friday night. I think against Houston, you're going to see the running backs go crazy on Saturday. That's, we'll talk more about that midweek, but I, I think you're going to see them go crazy with the running backs against Houston. Um, I, I think you're going to kind of see it more balanced against Tulane. And then, yeah, you'll see the full thing on the 21st of September uh, when with Tennessee, um, so I'm gonna say that's true. I really, I think they're just trying to piece it together. Uh, they're trying to see what they've got. I think they're trying to see guys that that know their assignments, guys that don't know their assignments. I still think they're waiting on a healthy and cohesive offensive line unit. Um, so yeah, I, I say for all those reasons, that's absolutely true. Right, number two, true or false? OU's defense is even better than what we expected. Absolutely true. And again, we talked about that in the first part of the podcast. Uh, I thought that the secondary had the chance to be one of the best units uh, in the country. I think now um, maybe it's an overreaction. Maybe it's an overreaction. But I think now you look at the defensive line. Could that be one of the best defensive lines in the SEC? Um, Maybe, but we'll know for sure against Tennessee. We'll know it better. I guess not for sure, but we'll know a lot better uh, where we stand with them when they play the volunteers. Here's what's crazy about how well this defense played the other night. I thought, I thought, you know, you got Kendall Dolby at Cheetah. But these Stetson's guys have had experience in other spots. And, uh, uh, you know, he said his friendship and the development that he's had with them in terms of spending time this offseason with them. Just hangs out with them all the time. He said they're really some of his best friends on the team. So we're going to be like the new- strength of this defense as well. But I think if I had to rate these units right now, defensive line, linebacker, defensive back, where I thought defensive back, best unit in the country, one of the best in the country, I think after just only after one game, only after one game, defensive line, best unit on the field. Yeah, then absolutely. You, then you go defensive backs. Then you go linebackers. I mean, we're talking about a guy who's going to be on the Butkus finalist list most likely. Well, anchor in that linebacker core, and they're the third best unit based on what we saw Friday night. Blows my and mind to say that. So, yeah, I think that's true. To even build on that, going to the secondary, we didn't see Woody Washington, and we saw a very limited Gentry Williams. Yeah. So yeah. it's – it's there's still a lot, a lot better this secondary can be. Now, I will say this – in regards to that, my boy Des Malone, I've been high on him. I'm still high on him. Wasn't super impressed. Wasn't super impressed. Yeah. 
but again, I didn't think he had to be impressive. He wasn't. That's that's fair. There wasn't a lot to for us to see flashes. I mean, the biggest play for the secondary, Kendall Doby played it perfectly on that coverage. Right. Tries to get the pick, but just tips it up, and then Kenai Walker is right there for it to land in his lap. Um, but outside of that, there wasn't a lot for this secondary to really work with. Fair point. I, I agree. Okay. I, I I can live with that. All right. Last true or false. This is definitely going to be the hardest one, but true or false. Taylor Tatum would be running back number one by the end of the season. I love this debate. I love what's happening. Uh, and do we not do this a lot as Oklahoma fans? You see one guy in a game early in the season and you crown him as, oh, he's it, man. We're going to, like, they're, they're saying the same thing about Michael Hawkins. Yeah, you're starting to put, uh, it's time to put Michael Hawkins in. And we kind of talked about that before all this started about how popular the, the backup quarterback is. If it's not the backup quarterback, it's the, it's the backup running back. Um, the answer to this is false unless, unless there's a bang load of injuries. Um, I still say this is Gavin Salchuk and it is Javante Barnes. The, the, the load work was not because, not because Barnes and Salchuk are lacking. It's, it's just, they already know what they got in Barnes and Salchuk. You got to You got to give Taylor Tatum his shot. You got to give Taylor Tatum his chance to go out there and earn it. And that's what he did. And I think I'm not changing what I said about Taylor Tatum. He averaged 13.8 yards per carry. He's the only running back to score a touchdown on the night. But you said it. I mean, that defense was defeated by the time Taylor Tatum gets in the game. He's got an NFL body. He's going to be on campus for three years. I don't think he's going to be your starting running back, though. Unless Javante Barnes and Gavin Salchuk go down. I just, I don't see it. I mean, the guy's talented. Don't get me wrong. The guy is talented. He is a load. I don't know that I'm ready to crown him the next Adrian Peterson. I don't know that I'm ready to say he is going to be the guy who supplants Gavin Sawcheck and Javante Barnes. I'm not there yet. Now, if he starts moving up and not doing what he did, he did it in garbage time. If he starts moving up and doing that in the second quarter, doing that in the first quarter, I, I might be swayed a little bit more. But don't forget, now he did come on the field early in the game. I think he came on the field actually before Javante Barnes did. If I remember same right. time, same time. Okay. Yeah. They were in there at the same time, weren't they? Yeah. Second but, drive. But the point is he didn't really get the workload. I mean, Sam Franklin got in there and got touches before Taylor Tatum did. Yeah. It, I, I agree with you. I, I don't, unless Taylor Tatum just, you know, comes Tennessee running backs are struggling. They put him in there and he can just do what he did that fourth quarter, I don't expect him to be the starting running back. I think this is 100% going to be the, you said Gavin Shawcheck, uh, J- uh, Javante Barnes. I think it's going to be the Javante Barnes, Gavin Shawcheck show. I think, you know, kind of what we saw, I know, take it, I'd say take it for the grain of salt, limited touches for Shawcheck, but I mean, Barnes was a, Sue string away from making a big touchdown run in the second quarter. He definitely looked to be the better of the two backs. And I expect him, I think, I think he will be number one by the end of the season, but I I definitely think it's going to be hard for Tatum to kind of come in and be beat those two guys out this season. Yeah, and that's not a knock against Taylor Tatum. Like I said, Absolutely his future not. is bright. And I agree. I um, you know, I was watching with Andre Ware given given the um was it Andre? Yeah, it's Andre Ware talking about um you he's a guy you gotta put him on the field. I mean, 
if you don't put him on the field, if you don't use him, you're preparing him for somebody else. Same thing with Michael Hawkins. But those guys, their time is tomorrow, not today. And you like what you saw and you want to like what you see. I mean, you want to like it. You want them to get that taste. You want them to get the culture of the program. You want them to fall in love with the university. You want them. And and the good thing with Taylor Tatum is the baseball side of things as well. I will say this. I I will. I, I don't know how we feel about this, but I'll say this. Taylor Tatum was worth DeMarco Murray getting suspended over, right? Are we, do we even know that it was Tatum that he got suspended over? We assume it was Tatum, but if it, I think I think it because I think it dates back a little bit before them. Maybe even I saw Chuck and Barnes. It sounds like it was kind of in that transition of of coaching staff coaching staffs when Lincoln Riley left. From what oh, I heard, okay. But I mean, but how long have you been recruiting Taylor Tatum? True. I don't know. I don't know who it was, but I'm just saying if it was Taylor Tatum, totally worth it. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, okay, Oklahoma plays against Houston this coming Saturday night. Just just a quick, just a quick